Hi everybody, Matt back with you. Hope you're having your best day. Today, if you can hear me at all, I'm currently next to a motorway, uh, despite the tranquil looking setting. Now when I was younger, I grew up in Old Town, which is about a mile above Hebden Bridge. And uh, between the two was a place called Dodnays. And very near to Dodnays, every summer, you could smell a certain thing that was happening there. That thing was the workings of a mink farm. And it wasn't necessarily the minks that were smelling, it was the rotting dead animals that they brought to feed them. Uh, thankfully, it's a practice that's long since vanished. And certainly the mink farm that was near to where I grew up uh, has also long gone. There doesn't even seem to be any photos of it anymore, but if you've got one, I'd love to try and remember what the building looked like. But today, I'm not in Hebden Bridge. I'm on the outskirts of Ellen. Mink are in the same family bracket as otters, weasels and ferrets. And they were often kept in cages on these farms and bred in captivity uh, for their fur to make things like mink coats and stoles. Certainly in the latter half of the 20th century, things like fur coats were a great fashion accessory and a must-have. So, this has not been the easiest of climbs. I've had to climb up through lots of brambles and heather, all likely giving way on the way up. But what we do have, look at this fabulous view. Uh, Ainley Top is above us there. Ellen in the distance. I'm hoping the farm is not too much further. Just as a last bit of punishment, we have gorse bushes. Ow! Typical, as I've <laughs> headed up the hillside. Of course, there's a path. <laughs> Okay, it's a shame that I'm already out of breath and ripped to pieces, but I think we have arrived. So the mink farm we're looking at today opened in the early 1950s. Uh, it's on Dewsbury Road and was known as the Hawkyard Mink Farm due to the owner having that surname. Uh, and it's just on the outskirts of Elland. The farm consisted of a number of long sheds, each with hundreds of cages where the mink were kept. And these are just a few pictures from the time um, of how the farm looked back in the 50s. Well, this is definitely it. The remains of Elland Mink Farm. What a, a tangle. I don't know if we're going to be able to get into any of these. Look at the brambles. Well, at least I'm not wearing shorts. <laughs> but we'll have a go. Let's see what we can here. But these are all the sheds that kept the mink. I think we'll be able to get into that one but let's head to the end first. else at the moment. Thank you. 
this must be the entrance, the original entrance. Okay, so here we are at the original entrance uh, of Ellen the Mink Farm. Um, I'm presuming, due to the gates being here and there being kind of a road leading up to it. Um, yeah, all those sheds. I'm going to have to try and get into some of them. I don't expect ow. Someone is sticking in me. Uh, I'm feeling these trousers may not survive today. Um, but yeah, from the 50s to the late 90s, uh, this place produced mink. But in 1997, something happened uh, that ceased uh, work here. And uh, by the year 2000, there was a new law in uh, that said uh, no more uh, animal fur to be used for things like clothing, etc. in this country. Uh, so this has been abandoned for roughly 25 years. So it looks like the only way to get to the other side of here is to head through the sheds. It was really overgrown at that side. I don't think I've ever seen quite so many brambles, but this one looks reasonable to get through. Uh, oh my, look here. So these are the cages that would have had the minks in. Oh, so many. So, as I said earlier, the minks are kind of a, the same family as otters and stoats. So they're quite big. They've just been in here. I would imagine one per cage. Or maybe not if they were breeding them, but... Wow, that's horrendous. So you can see where some of the cages have been... Oop. <laughs> Ignore that ripping noise. <laughs> it's not my trousers. Uh, some of it's collapsed over time. I didn't expect to see cage after cage like this. So if you imagine all these t kind of tunnels all have these cages in all had both sides. We're looking at thousands Literally thousands of animals. Oh God. Awful. More cages. That was an eye opener. In many ways, there's a oh. I mean, all the same. Can't even see the other end. Well, I don't know if there's anything else here, uh, like if there's any other buildings or machinery uh, but <laughs> that in itself was a uh, yeah just a staggering amount of cages so there doesn't look to be uh, any other kind of buildings here um, I haven't counted how many of these sheds there are. Um, I'll go down another one in a second just to see if there's anything uh, different. You can see most of these are absolutely inaccessible. Maybe this one. Maybe not. Let's head into this one. Same again in this one, 
all the evidence of the uh, cages. So many. So by the late 90s, the practice of breeding animals for fur clothing was not viewed as in the same way it had been the previous decades. And this place was certainly very controversial. And in 1997, a number of activists, animal rights activists, appeared here uh, one night and they destroyed a great many of these cages. Some of these might be the actual ones. And they released the best part of 500 mink into the wild. Now, of course. Initially, you think that's a great thing to do. You've saved those pure, poor animals <laughs> from an awful fate. But unfortunately, they couldn't possibly have imagined what would happen next. So the next morning, uh, there were major issues in Elland. Those issues were caused by the release of 500 mink into the area because mink are by nature incredibly vicious animals. If there was one here today I would imagine it would be chewing my fingers off as I put them through the cage. Uh, so hundreds of livestock on farms, chickens, dead the next day. Uh, pets, things like guinea pigs, rabbits, all massacred if they were outside by this invasion of mink. Uh, so, although uh, the activists had obviously thought they were doing the right thing, in actual fact it caused mayhem and people were advised to keep their pets inside. And what happened is police, farmers, ended up having to go around the area, including the woods I probably came through at the beginning, to hunt the mink down before they could breed and completely overpower any other wildlife that's in the area. So it's very rare you see mink anywhere now. I've only seen one, I think, once uh, near a bridge in Hebden. Um, and that's about it. So I don't know now, 20 years on, whether there are any mink left in Elland. Um, perhaps if you're watching this, you live in Ellen, perhaps you can let me know if uh, you do still see any sightings. Can you imagine being in here all your life? In 1981, uh, an act of law had been passed in Parliament uh, that forbade the releasing of mink into the wild. Uh, maybe this was happening uh, frequently whether it was the change in um, but people's opinions or tastes of uh, clothing or whether it was the activists, I don't know, but obviously that meant that the activists who broke in here uh, had broken the law, but in actual fact I don't think anything came of it. There was a lot of uh, newspaper coverage at the time as to who might have been involved, uh, including possibly <laughs> the police themselves. Uh, but we don't know, and by 2000, as I say, it was no longer uh, a business across the UK that uh, it was passed that uh, fur trade was ceased. So, obviously, things do change. We look at this now quite controversially and quite a um, sensitive subject, but you know, back in the 50s and 60s, it wasn't viewed the same way. Uh, things do change, you must remember that. So possibly you know, we can't blame people who worked here or who had the business here. Um, it's just the way of the world at the time. Okay, if I do come across anything else, I'll uh, add a little bit on in photographs at the end, but rather than just uh, shred myself up and down these uh, <laughs> corridors 
uh, I'll leave it at that. So join me for the next video soon. I'm going to get soaked on my way back down into Ellen, but it might uh, help to <laughs> ease my wounds from the brambles. All right, guys, take care. See you next time.